right, so good. It's great to have you in church. I know you're excited about being here. You got your notepads, your pens, your Bibles. If you've not brought your Bible, I know you've got it written on your heart. You have memorized the entire Bible cover to cover, yes? Amen. All right, Acts 2, 42 to 47, you'll know it well. This is our key scripture for our series. We're in the middle of a series called Neighbors, and we're really talking about the power of the church family, power of connections, and what you can do to contribute to making um, even more life-giving, vibrant relationships in the house. This is what it says in Acts 2, 42, they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, that's to each other. Look at your neighbor. Look at your other neighbor, that's your fellowship. They are your fellowship with each other to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, everyone say every day. You might say that's a bit over the top. Every day. They continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. In other words, they enjoyed each other's company. They liked each other. Look at your neighbor again. Just look at them. Make a quick decision. Would I like to spend every day with this person? If it's your spouse, you've got no choice. You are committed to that. So I will love to spend every single day with you. All right, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. How many people want verse 47 to be real? Hello? Anybody want verse 47 to be real? Every day people are making a decision to follow Jesus. And there's people in your world that are one conversation, one moment, one walk across a room from doing what you did acknowledging Jesus is real and accepting him in their life. And so we can be that church, just as they saw in Acts, every single day, people being added to their number daily, those who are being saved. And listen, that kind of environment and that kind of results happened out of a group of people who were devoted to what God was doing. They were personally invested, committed, and there was a level of consistency in their life. Today we're looking at the title, Take the Bins Out. Take the Bins Out, the power of consistency. In verse number 46 of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, Every day they continued to meet together in in the temple courts. Every day they continued to meet together. And so we're announcing today services every single... No, we're not. (laughs) But what, what there was a level in, in their lives, the early disciples, the early church, where consistency was crucial. And if we're going to do something of significance in our life, significance comes off the back of consistency. And so you need consistency in your life. Take the bins out. Take the bins out. I don't know how many bins you have outside your home, but we in Trafford have four bins We have the green bin for food waste and garden waste. You have to pay extra for that. Then we have blue bin, which is for paper. Then we have the black bin, which is for bottles and cans. Is it cans as well? I'm not sure they go in mine anyway. No, not supposed to. (laughs) And then we, we have the gray bin, and that's basically for everything else. And since we had kids, we applied for the nappy version, which is twice the size. Amazing. If you've got kids, ask for the nappy size bin, and it's like massive. And uh, you'll be happy for the rest of your life. But, you know, there's something about taking the bins out that you do not. The reason we are so consistent taking the bins out is because there is nothing worse on the face of this planet than the smell of bin juice. Hello, someone. Especially in the food bin. Can I get an amen? I, we've just decided in our marriage that, you know, one of the gifts that God has not given to me, and therefore I shouldn't operate in this area, is taking the food bin out. 
I cannot deal with food waste, especially chicken carcasses. You know when you've carved a chicken and you're left with the carcass? I cannot handle that. And so we've just got a mutual understanding in our marriage. Don't worry, it's working for us, I think, I hope. Uh, she will always get rid of the chicken carcass. Because there's nothing worse than the smell of bin juice. In fact, there is one thing worse, and that is the taste of bin juice. Friday night, youth have got a new game starting September. Bin juice. You know, but... but there's nothing worse, and, and so we're consistent. You know, the only thing with taking the bins out, the challenge is what bin goes out on what week? I mean, seriously, four bins, there's so many different, like, combinations. I did statistics at A-level, and I've still got no idea how you work out the permutations, how many different combinations of bins can go out. And so the whole street on Wednesday night is stood with that curtain open like this, working out who's going to go first, who's going to pioneer the way. Because you don't want to be that person on Thursday morning where the whole street's looking at you, tutting, going, God, because of you, we've still got a full bin because you led us to believe it was the green bin. You know, so we've, we understand the significance of doing small things like taking the bins out. Because the truth is that small things make a big difference. Yeah, I know that because there's so many of you in this room that have a gym membership. Your gym has overprescribed memberships because they know you're not going to turn up. And so they can sell your place five times. I know we understand the power of inconsistency in our life because you went to Ikea to buy and tell your spouse that you'd be responsible for the indoor houseplant that you've never watered since you got it. And so now it's brown and it's got to go in the green food bin with your garden waste. You've got to enter that zone of life. Some of you have got goldfish floating on the top of the water because small things like feeding... Make a big difference. I want you to think about every connection and relationship that you have in your life and to understand that small things in relationships make a big difference. In terms of making a house your home, it's not the big things that matter. It's small things that are going to make a big difference in order to find a church family, a community that you can belong in that you are known and valued. It's going to be a result of you doing small things that will result in a big difference. We've got to understand the power of consistency in our life. Read, let's have a look at Galatians chapter 6 for a moment. It says in verse 7, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. That law of sowing and reaping is something that every single human on the planet experiences in their life. If you sow something good in relationship, more times than not, you'll receive something good in that relationship. In terms of atmosphere, environment, the way someone speaks to you, you would speak to others as you wish them to be spoken to you. We understand the principle and law that God created before time of sowing and reaping. And that's what the Bible's saying here. Everybody experiences it. But the fruit of that law is dependent on your position. Verse 8, whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. But whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, doing the small things. For at the proper time, at the right time, we will reap a harvest, it's a law, if we do not give up. That's the power of of consistency. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Did you hear that last bit? The Bible is clear. Let us do good to all people, especially to those 
who belong in the house of God. Like for me, my, my default mechanism is to think others, you know, outside of church. I understand to do good to community, to society, to people in the world so that they can see something, taste something of God and go, wow, there's something different. But the Bible says first you should do good to those who belong to the family of believers. That's what this, this series is focusing on. What can we do in this house to invest in re good relationships, re life-giving, vibrant relationships. And every person in this room can uh, receive that kind of life-giving relationships, but it's going to happen when you understand the principle of what you sow, you will reap. Every person today can sow something small to reap a harvest. And so we've got to understand the power is in our hands today to do something about receiving life-giving, vibrant community, relationships, a family environment. Today, you can do something about it. But it comes from the power of consistency. If you do the right thing for long enough, you will, if you don't get weary in doing good, you will reap a harvest. If you today were to invest £100 into an account with a 5% interest rate, over one year, you would have in your account, anybody want to give an answer? The answer is not Jesus to this question. The answer is £105. All right. £105. The truth of compound interest is the next year you don't just gain the interest based on your investment of £100. You receive interest on both your investment and the previous year's interest. So now compounding interest is now you're benefiting even where you've not sown. And as the years go on, your return is compounded. In other words, it grows, it increases. With every year, you see more and more benefit in your life. I think the power of consistency in your relationships is much like compound interest. You may only see a little return the first time you invest into a personal connection. But when you are consistent, and you keep doing the right thing for long enough, in your friendships, in your community, in your life group, you keep investing, you keep being consistent, you keep showing up, you keep being positive, you keep encouraging. What you see is your return in, in the value of that connection is compounded over time. And the more consistent you are, and the longer that you go, you actually find more return, more fulfillment. You see a greater return. I think about people like Justin and Paul who was here a minute ago. Oh, she's there. Is everything okay? It's all good. Okay, good. It's not about the bins, is it? Like, it's probably the bins that probably, yeah. Justin and Paula and other people around this room who've been in this church for years, and through the power of consistency, have seen God do amazing things over and over again. It wasn't by looking over the fence and seeing that, you know, oh, what's better over there? Because they realize what's over there is probably astroturf anyway. And so if we keep sowing seed, we're going to see God do amazing things. And you can see the value of incredible depth of connection, relationship, family, if today you'll make a decision to invest in good relationships. You ask anybody in finance, when's the right time to invest? And they will tell you, today. And in personal relationships, the right time to invest is today. Don't wait for when you feel worthy of that person's attention. Don't wait until you feel good enough to reach out beyond yourself. Don't wait until another time or somebody comes across the path who you just feel like, wow, the aura's in the room and so I'm going to connect with them. 
Make a decision today. Walk across the room. Put the power of now and the power of consistency, and you watch how increase will start to happen in your life. I know you, the most disciplined people on the face of this planet, are sat here in this room right now. Because every day you make decisions about how you live your life, you see this compounding interest effect in every habit and discipline that you have. Just recently I started a new small discipline, a small habit, small things make a big difference. And so I start to drink a liter of water before I leave the house every morning. A liter of water. I saw an immediate impact from that. And that was netted in toilet trips. Immediate impact. But, you know, in terms of energy, on the first day, you don't really feel anything. If anything, it's a step back because I'm spending more time resting in the restroom, right, for the Americans than actually kind of like being productive. But over time, through consistency and doing the right thing long enough, you reap better sleep, you reap more energy, you reap more alertness. And so by doing the right thing for long enough, you reap a large reward. And today in your, con- in your connection and friendship with people, in your investment into this family, by walking across the room, by asking an open question, you will start to see compound interest in your relationships. I promise you, if you invest in connections today, in 12 months' time, through consistency, consistently taking the bins out, you won't have bin juice in your life. Hello, come on. What you will have is vibrant, life-giving relationships. You'll have a depth of support, vulnerability, accountability, prayer support, practical support, and it starts today. Let me just finish off, give you a few ways how you can invest today, be consistent in what you invest into your people relationships is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. It says, since you excel in everything, Paul speaking to the Corinthian church, but it's as if he knows you today, audacious church. Since audacious church, because you excel in everything, right? Does that feel like you? Hello, anyone out there? Let's excel in response right now. Hello? Since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness or enthusiasm, passion, and in love, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. We started this series by talking in the context of our neighboring connection, family relationships, about the power of generosity. That just as we excel in every area of life, we've got to work on something that goes against our default of me, myself, what I can keep, and invest in in relationships through generosity. But today, we just want to literally focus on these four aspects there about how you can excel consistently in your relationships. The first area Paul speaks about is faith creating faith environments in every circle you do life in. In your work colleague connection and circles, inject faith, not fear. In your church relationships, you can have connection with your life group and you can be someone that brings faith into the room. In every relationship, I want you to think about how you can invest faith into that connection. Now, we know through Abraham's example that faith is not ignorance of facts. Faith is not just blab it, grab it, ignore what's going on, and just say what we think might happen. It's not an empty, hollow hype or reality. Faith is facing the facts. I know my body's as good as dead, but I believe the supernatural power of God can work in my actual reality turn it around and cause great strength from a natural weakness. You can inject faith even when there is fear. You can go into a scenario 
just as Lucas and Hannah are, with a great obstacle in front of them and inject faith into the room when they step into that hospital environment. And because you are praying tomorrow morning as a church, what we're doing is injecting faith into that hospital. We're injecting faith into every one of your prayer requests when we pray into them. We're injecting faith through the, through the way we speak to one another. And faith changes the atmosphere. The other, uh, a few months ago, I was painting my bathroom ceiling. And I, was, I kept having to paint it because mold would grow back and, and thinking, what's going on? There's something wrong with the ceiling. Until I realized I'd stripped the tiles back and started to uh, remake over the, the bathroom. I did it. Thank you very much. And as I was doing that, took the tiles away. Behind the tiles, the wood was completely rotten. I just tapped it. It would crumble. It was sodden wet. And what I realized is the mold in the ceiling, there's actually nothing wrong with the ceiling. The mold on the ceiling is simply a reflection of the environment. You see, the mold, the rot in the decaying wood was creating a damp environment that now the ceiling was reflecting the environment, the atmosphere of the room. And so however much I painted, unless I dealt with the heart issue, the rot that was going on, I would never be able to impact the ceiling. There's environments that you step into and you see mold. And where, where, rather than just painting over the mold, I wonder if you'd be daring enough to say, God, I wonder, is there some rot in my heart? Is it, because it seems whichever circle I go into, there's an atmosphere of negativity. I wonder if there's something in me, God, that's rotting. That's causing every environment I step into to reflect what's really going on in me. See, moving up in your connection with people is understanding. If you change who you are, you activate faith. You bring who you are into every room you step into. I wonder this week how you could create faith environments in your relationships. The second thing is Paul says you should excel in faith in speech. Speech is one of the best ways you can actually create faith environments. The words you speak are powerful. James 3, verse number 3, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although, although they're so large and are driven by strong wind circumstances, they are steered by a small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the whole course of one's life. Your speech, your tongue, sets the whole direction of your life. I wonder if you could see yourself in two, five, ten years' time where you'd want to be. I wonder who you'd want to be. You've got the decision to make through the power of the rudder in your mouth. Through the power of your speech, you can determine the course of your life. You can create faith atmospheres, not by ignoring circumstances, but saying, yes, this is going on. This is a reality in my life. But I believe the same God who worked in this area of my life can work in this situation. I believe the same God who worked in Justin and Paula's life can work in my life. I believe the same God who connected that person who was lonely and yet now they've found life-giving, vibrant relationships. I believe even though I feel isolated, the feeling's not false, it's real. But I believe that God's able to turn this around. And as I have courage to walk ac across the room, I believe God can turn my isolation round into incredible depth of relationship. How do you change your faith environments? Change your speech. This week, 
I wonder if you'd put that to test. Just change the way you speak in a few environments and see the impact. The third thing is that you should excel in knowledge. In other words, he was saying the church, you're excellent at, at just growing in learning and understanding. And we in our relational context, we should also grow and learn how to take on knowledge. Great thing, first base is, is to learn people's names. If you're not good with names, then just do what I do. And just say, listen, I am terrible at remembering names. You know, I'm just, I'm, it's all my fault. I'm really sorry. I know you've told me a hundred times, but please, just for my sake, could you remind me your name? It takes the awkward out in just a few seconds. And then as you just learn their name, right, I'm going to commit that. And start to build a story. Ask people open-ended questions. You'll see how your relationship will grow the depth of connection. Ask a new question. Often the depth of connections we're looking for are found simply by asking a new question. A new question you've never asked before. Rather than just asking the same old question, ask something new. This week, a couple of weeks ago, I asked someone in our church about their pet. Have you ever asked someone about their pet? It is a fatal mistake. Wing and Sharan, I don't know if they're in this service or the last one, but amazing couple in our church. And I asked uh, about their pet dog. I knew they'd had a puppy recently. How's it going with the puppy? And little did I know this conversation would open up a new world. I cannot still get my head around. They told me about their pet's Instagram account. You heard that right. I'll say it again. They told me about their pet... Their pet has an Instagram account. We'll pray for you later if that's you. (laughs) Their pet had 5,000 followers. That's five with three zeros followers on Instagram. You know Jesus is coming soon and very soon when pets have Instagram accounts with 5,000 followers. But by asking a new question, you learn things about people. And honestly, if you start to open, uh, ask open-ended new questions, you'll start to build depth in your relationship. Tell me, what's one thing that you feel like God's been saying over the last, give them a long period of time, so over the last year, you know, what's one thing? What's something you learned in the last month or so? I want to learn from you. Is there something you learned? What's some one thing that you did over the last month that's made a small difference, a small change that made a big difference that I could do? Ask new questions, and you'll start to not just build breadth of relationships, but depth of relationships that God's got for you. The last thing is simply this: that you would grow. This is Paul's heart for the church: that you would excel in in faith, in speech, in knowledge. And the fourth thing, complete earnestness, enthusiasm. In other words, desire. You've got to want real, vibrant relationships to experience them. You've got to understand why God wants you to have real, vibrant family connection relationships in this house. And the reason is, is because it's a reflection of who God is. In Genesis The Bible is clear. God said, let us make man in our image. Speaking about one God, but discovered in three persons. God the Father who sent His Son. He so loved us. Created you. He so loved you and wanted a plan and a purpose for your life. And saw we were making so many mistakes gave us a law simply so that it would highlight the areas we need God. So the law was given, not as a solution, but to say, listen, you've got to see there's some problems here. And so the law highlighted to us, okay, we've got some stuff going wrong here. And so then God, the Father, sent His Son because He so loved you that the solution would be that the Son, God, the Son, would give His life, pay the price, And take all of your guilt, hurt, your shame, all the things that you've done wrong. Bury them in the grave. 
through the power of his death and would rise again to give you a second chance, new life in connection with Jesus. As Jesus was ascended back to the Father in heaven, he said, I'm not going to leave you as you follow in my way. You're not going to have to do this in your own strength. I'll leave you with the Holy Spirit, a helper, counselor, an intercessor. He's going to walk with you, a guide. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God, one God in three persons. You see, God in Himself is community, connection, relationships. And so God said, let us make man in our image. And so God gifted to us not just the global church, which is a reflection of God's victory, God's plan and His global purpose, but He also gifted us the local church, which is us today gathering as a community called Audacious Church. One of the great things that we combat is that we are, we are not just the global church. We are that. But even more incredible than that is we are the local church. That's where we put our roots down with an understanding of the big picture. But the depth of real vibrant relationships is found in a local house. And so God has gifted you. He's gifted me. I know that. He's gifted me, you guys. I literally thank you for turning up. You are God's gift to me to encourage me. Some of you are so gifted in all of the areas where I'm seriously lacking. Thank you for turning up in my life. There may be one degree that I've got that God's given to me that He didn't give to you. But we actually, in the community together, we represent the goodness of God. God wants you to experience who He is. And who He is is found in one another. It's found in brothering, sistering. It's found in getting a coffee together after a service. It's found in practicing hospitality by saying, hey, why don't you come around for dinner this week? It's found in sticking around 10 minutes longer than you're, you feel like doing because you want to get home. But it's saying 10 minutes, I'm just going to give this to encouraging someone. It's found in coming with a mindset on a Sunday that I'm going to Sunday to encourage someone. It's going with a mindset on Sunday that I'm going to go and refresh somebody else. And it's in my refreshing of others that I will find refreshment. It's, it's in the local house where we see the goodness of God in our life. I wonder if today you would invest in the depth of vibrant, life-giving relationships that God wants you to experience. Today, the amazing thing is you woke up and you came here today. And so the fact that you're hearing this is evidence that God every day presents to us a new mercy. Today, God's gone, oh, my new mercy for you, audacious church, is to find vibrant, life-giving relationship if you'll invest today.